Lumberjacks is sponsored by Echo, only professional grade with five-year warranty. Crown, protect, maintain, save. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Yamaha, rev your heart. Here we are in St. Stephen, New Brunswick for an annual International Lumberjack Competition on the shores of the St. Croix River. St. Stephen, also known across the country as Chocolate Town and the home of the Ganong Chocolate Factory. And just a 15 minute drive up the coast, also on the Bay of Fundy is St. Andrews by the Sea and the home of a beautiful Algonquin Resort and world class golf course. Our Lumberjack Competition is being hosted in the Ganong Nature Park. In total we have 35 competitors competing over $10,000 in prize money in 12 different events. We we are going to be heading into the Master Stock Saw event. First time I've seen it on Lumberjack's TV series. And we're going to be showing you the top two heats. This first heat is Brad Stevens taking on Donald Lambert from Quebec. And right now we're going to throw it down to the field and Rod Cumberland for the play-by-play. -play. And they're off. Stock sawing. Both guys in the wood really quickly. Don Lambert a little bit ahead at this time. Putting the pressure on as he gets in the smaller wood. And it is Donald Lambert. First one up on the saw cut number two. Brad Stevens wasting no time here, making a nice thin cut. Oh, and it's going to be Donald Lambert taking the seat of the Masters Stock Saw. Brad, you had a great cut there in the Masters Stock Saw, but apparently all hands are treated equal in this event. Talk to me about that disqualification. Uh, he said my pinky was not on top of the wood. It was all outside. It wasn't down over the edge of the wood. It was over the top. It wasn't flat on the top of the wood. And my thing is, my two hands are, are 12 and a half inches wide. Like Roger's hands are only like eight inches wide. So I should I should technically get three inches to overhang. Well, maybe we have a new movement started here. The rest of the cut was really good though, Brad. Talk to me about the rest of the cut. Saws, I'm not, I'm not used to running the little saws like that. So I had to baby it a little bit, a little bit of pressure to keep it cutting, but not slow it down. I was just listening to it. Absolutely. Well, you were whispering sweet nothings perfectly to it. Brad, good luck the rest of the day. Thank you. Well, a good job there by Brad Stevens, although he took a DQ because of the size of his sausage finger hands. It's Donald Lambert that sets the time to beat with a 15.5 heading into the final heat. It's going to be Paul Woodland taking on Paul Coger. And Roger McPeet sets him off, and it is Paul Coger, the first guy to the wood. Both guys reset and getting ready for the second. Now look at this, it's a dead heat right now. Who's it gonna be? Paul Woolen to the left, Paul Coger to the right. As they get into the smaller wood, and look at that photo finish from start to finish. What a great race the whole way through that. All right, it's not every day we see races decided by eight one hundredths of a second, but Paul Woodland, you just mastered the master stock saw there. Talk to me about that cut, man. Yeah, well, the cut went really well. The saw was working good. The wood, I think, was pretty even to have that close a race. We're two old loggers, too, Paul and I, so it was fun. Well, Woodzilla, I've heard the nickname here in New Brunswick for you. You proved it on that one. Excellent cut, sir. Thank you very much. Well, in the Masters stock saw, it boiled down to the Battle of the Pauls, with Woodland beating Coger by eight one hundredths of a second. Just before the show got started, Dave Johns had a chance to talk to Alan McEachern. All right, I'm standing here with the mayor of St. Stephen, New Brunswick. Your Worship, tell us what this event means to you and the public. Uh, it means a lot. You know, it's a nice yearly event. It's been going on for 25 years. It's good to have uh, have something like this going on in our Ganong Nature Park here in St. Stephen. Uh, it brings people from all all areas, from the American side, on the east, eastern coast, all the way up through to uh, parts of Canada. And, and, it's, and it's nice to have all that healthy competition as well. And many thanks to the town of St. Stephen and Charlotte County for hosting this annual event for 25 years and going strong. This first heat of the men's underhand butcher block is Whitmore and Jones taking on Nickerson and Doug Armsworthy. Berlin Nickerson, first man in the wood, wailing away at this big pine block. Looks like his axe is moving the wood pretty well, so Berlin's got a good pace going here. And a great partner in Dougie Armsworthy. Doug reaching down, trying to get those bottom swings out. Different technique over here by the Americans. Each one is chopping his own side. So Brad Jones chopping his own side, and then Kyle Whitmore's chopping the second side. 
Berlin Nickerson, though, and Dougie Aarons, are they both sticking together here on working on one side? Be interesting to see which technique will work a little bit better here. Both guys keeping good paces now. Boys in the team of Armsworthy and Berlin Nickerson already into the small wood on this big pine block already. Doing a great job here. Berlin Nickerson swinging around to side number two. Making quick work of this here, Doug and Berlin. Brad Jones and Kyle Whitmore also swinging still well. Nice, strong swings, keeping a good pace. Looks like they're about halfway through their block as well. So this should be a good race between both these teams. Dougie Arms really reaching down, trying to get that bottom wood pulled out. And now Berlin's back in, still swinging good and strong here. These guys are in great shape. Time will fall in this heat. Still a good pace over there by the last, the two Americans swinging well, oiling their axes between each swing, between each competitor. Dougie keeping the pace up quite well here right now in this underhand butcher block. As he gives way again to Berlin Nixon, he jumps back in, wailing away at the block. Getting into the small wood now, both teams. They'll be trying to chip this wood out, making quick work of this, seeing if they can't get that bottom wood dri driven off. And Kyle Whitmore taking over again along with Doug Armsworthy. So if a little bit faster pace here by the Armsworthy Berlin Nickerson team. As they get into the small wood at the bottom. Brad Jones back up and he's in again, trying to get in and reach that bottom wood to drive things off. He switched around to side number two. So both guys here now working on the, the back side of the block. And Doug Arms with the back up again. Has he done enough work yet so that he can finish things off here for their team? Kyle Whitmore also voids both teams still swinging with lots of pace and lots of power. They're both into the small wood now trying to drive things off of there. Who's it gonna be? They gotta break this block clean. Whitmore and Jones may have done enough work on the front side of the wood. Things seem to be slowing down a little bit for the Armsworthy Berlin Nickerson team. Let's cheer them on here, gang. Great work here, all th over three minutes chopping right now in the underhand butcher block. This is how it was done in the days of old. Doug reached down in the bottom wood, so now they're almost there. The block is starting to move. We can see both blocks starting to move. As they wail away here, trying to finish it off, and there it is, Berlin Nickerson. Finishing things off for Nickerson Arms, really. Gentlemen, chopping like a cohesive unit in that one. The butcher block, you guys had a strategy, you committed, talk to me about it and how it worked. You know, uh, it was lots of fun. Um, I just want to know where you keep your dictionary because I want some of your words, buddy. I got to, I got to be able to do these interviews, and uh, this, this book's got to be out in front of us. So that was a cohesive chop, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a French English translation here. That was a great chop, Doug. How'd it go for you? No, it was good. Uh, you know, we switched some axes right way through, but other than that, the the block was clean, no hidden knots. So we was pretty happy with it. Absolutely, that was a concern. These all being butt logs. Did you guys use good axes in this, or did you guys kind of go with your secondary axes? Yeah, exactly. Secondary stuff, and I had my uh, beater axe on on uh, standby just in case. So, um, yeah, they were they were ugly, and uh, but they're they're ugly for for most. So uh, it's all fair game. Well, that's a whole lot of effort and a whole lot of wood there. 22 inches of Aspen. This next heat is the last heat. We got Coger and Nicey taking on the Cumberland brothers. Time to beat just over three minutes and 13 seconds. And they're both off. Cumberland into the wood ahead of Matt. Matt swinging a little bit slower and harder. Ben keeping a feverish pace here. And he's off. Good race here. Both guys reaching low. all. Four competitors, big tall lads, so they should have no problem reaching those long axes down to the bottom. They're switched over again. Matt's up and Matt's trying into something different here. He's starting into side number two, unless they've already made the switch from the second side. Fever's pace here by both teams, chopping away. Looks like they're already on side number two over here. The guys from USA doing a great job here on the underhand butcher block. Both guys swinging fast and furious here. Swinging hard and swinging strong. As they get into the small wood now, bend nicely into the small wood over here as he takes out a little bit more in the bottom. 
Who's it gonna be here in the underhand butcher block as they both get into the small wood, trying to drive things off here. Oh, a little bit of trick here by the guys from down under USA. Go back to side number two one more time here. As the Carmel boys get into the small wood. Who's it gonna be here? Underhand butcher block. They get into the small wood, gonna try to break things off. Great racing here in the underhand butcher block. Who's it gonna be as they get ready to drive things off? They're back to the second side again. The ax came through here on one. Who's it gonna be? There it is! Kind of a dramatic finish, but they got the block done. Gentlemen, 23 inches of awesomeness there. Walk me through that cut. You said you turned a little early, but it looked like it came off clean at the end. Well, the biggest thing with the butcher block is you can only do 10 hits per person, so we had Matt here counting for us, making sure we weren't going to get that DQ. And yeah, in the front, uh, the block's so big, I should have been a little bit smarter and taken a good one-on-one -one at the bottom before I turned around. But uh, no, just very blessed today. MVP of the cut, Matt. Talk to me about how important that counting was, bud. Well, I just try to get it loud as clear as possible and motivate. Well, the class of this field were clearly Ben and Nathan Cumberland with a 148.69. Close on their heels were a couple of Americans, Koger and Nicely. Back here at the Ganon Nature Park in St. Stephen, New Brunswick, right here in the shores of the St. Croix River for the International Lumberjack Competition. We're about to put the bow on this thing as we head into the hot saw. We're gonna be showing you the top four heats. This first seat, Doug Armsworthy taking on Mario Burke and it's three cuts of 17 inches of Aspen. And they're off. Oh, one saw starting. Dougie Armsworthy saw is going and going well. He gets the first cut in the ground. Mario Burke's gonna make up lost time here to get a saw started. Dougie Aaronsworth is going to win this heat of the hot saw. What a cut, man. You were pumped about that. Walk us through it because you were fighting some adversity, I heard, in the last few weeks. Talk to me what's led up to this. Yeah, well, it's it's been a, a few years, a couple, a couple three years uh, with that thing. It's a love-hate relationship, mostly hate. But uh, it, uh, I've been playing with it last week, and it seemed to try and, try and runs a little better now. And hopefully i got one more day next this weekend, so it'll hopefully run better. <laughs> Well, that first heat of the hot saw and Doug Armsworthy set a time to beat of 9.99. The second heat, Publico Nova Scotia's Berlin Nickerson is taking on St. Gilles, Quebec's Donald Lambert. Three cuts, down, up, down. And they're off. Both saws start, but Donald, Donald Lambert, first guy to the wood. He has lots of trouble. Let's go back for another cut from Berlin Nickerson. It's the first guy down. Great cut there with your 343 hilts built saw. That first cut, bit of a cake instead of a cookie there, but you dialed in for the rest of it. Talk me about it. Yeah, exactly. After you take a big first one, then you're just bagging for more wood. And uh, I think I was pulling fibers right from the outside of the, the disc on the next two, but thin as I could go and still comfortably make a fast cut. Time come in at 539, which uh, I can do faster, but uh, for after that first cut, that was still very good stuff. So. Well, definitely lowered the time to beat down to 539, and Dave Johns, our interviewer on the field there, referred to it as a Hilts built saw. That is Ken Hilts from right here in the Maritimes. This third heat, Paul Woodland taking on Scott Reed in the hot saw. Both saws start. Paul Woodland, first one to the wood. Both guys cut neck and neck. Well, it's a close race. All right, here with Scott Reed, and I don't know how you bribed Roger before the heat to leave his gun behind the stand so that you could get a double start there when your saw didn't go in the first 60 seconds, but congratulations, man. That was a heck of a cut. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm just so lucky uh, he left his gun on the stand, and we got to stand down and restart because uh, after about 10 pulls, I still didn't have it going, and uh, I just got lucky. Well, Scott Reed says that all the time. He didn't get lucky. He's very good at it, and he's got a fantastic saw. 5.09, and he takes the hot saw. Closed captioning is brought to you by Dickies. Quality workwear since 1922. Well, we're about to put the International Lumberjack competition to bed here in St. Stephen, New Brunswick, and the International Relay, Canada versus the United States. A total of 10 events and 11 competitors per team. And they're off. The great relay race, the stock saw. They need to make two cuts on this with an Echo 620 chainsaw. First cut's almost done. And it's Brittany McLean ahead right now for Team Canada. Kyle Widmore putting a little bit of pressure on this. He's got to do a little bit of catch up. 
Oh, it's Team Canada off first. Paul Coger pulling the anchor here at the underhand shot for Team USA. Paul's around for side number two or Team USA. Great race here right now in the relay. And Team Canada's off now to the axe throw. Louis Bork has to get a four or a five. Paul Coger getting done here on the underhand chop. And now it's down to the axe throw. Both guys throwing threes. They need two throws and a four or a five. Yes, two, four, there we go. One, each guy needs one more throw. Team Canada gets it, they're off to the double buck. Oh, it's close. It's a three, let's go Dave Johns. There it is, and they're off in the double buck. We got a good close race here right now in the international relay race. Both teams on the double buck. And it's Team Canada's with a slight lead. As they go into the standing block, both guys here. Doc Arms really taking on Brad Jones, and Brad Jones putting a mean front in. They're tied right now. Doc Arms really putting in a standing block chop. But look at Brad Jones, he's getting ready to drive it now. And he takes Team USA ahead. Team USA now in first place as they move to Ben nicely in the single block. Alicia Schroeder also doing the single buck for Team Canada, but Ben nicely getting down into the small wood and he has it off! Team USA pulling ahead right now in the relay race. Alicia Schroeder still on the single buck and Megan Woods doing a great job here on the obstacle pole. She has a saw going, needs to cut with both sides of the bar. Alicia Schroeder getting down to the small wood on the single buck. And Megan has it down, doing her one step. She's back on. She's got to touch the end. And she goes into Matt Coger in the springboard chop. Team Canada just getting their saw going in the obstacle pull. Have a little bit of time to make up. Matt Coger doing a great job. Has his first board in. Good, strong board. Jeremy Salvas turning down. Just has to get to the end of the log. He just has to get to the end and touch. Matt Coger on board number two. Ben Cumberland has to make up some ground here. He has his hands full with Matt Coger. Matt Coger getting into the wood on the top. Ben Cumberland up on board number one. Matt putting a big hole in the front of his log in the springboard chop. Team can a little bit of ground to catch up here. Matt doing a great job in the springboard chop. Ben has board number two up, so Ben's pulling him in. Can he catch him in the springboard chop? Matt doing a great job here, has USA way out in front. Matt's getting ready to drive things off here to let them go. And it's off now! Team USA started in the kettle boil. Team Canada still dragging far behind. As Ben Cumberland puts final strokes in here, trying to release the team to kettle boil. He's around to side number two, Ben Cumberland is Yvonne. And Mary get things going here in the kettle boil, have their shavings made already. Need to light their fire, get their kettle on as Ben puts the last few swings in to drive it off. Lots of ground to make up now as we both go in the kettle boil. The ladies from the States have their fire going. Trying to make a few blocks apart there for their kettle to go on. Scotty Reed and Kelly Bonus. Uh, Kelly Bonus pulling clean up here for Team Canada. Kettle is on for Team USA. Doing a great job here, the girls from USA in the kettle boil. Union Dale, Pennsylvania. Team Canada now has a kettle on. It's going to come right down to the kettle boil. Good race right here now in the kettle boil. Mary putting a lot of wood on this fire. Mary down, blowing already in the kettle boil. Right down to the final strokes here in the kettle boil in the relay race. Oh, and the Team Canada's fire starting to grow a little bit bigger. Who's it gonna be? And maybe a come from behind win here in the international relay race. Things are struggling here with Team USA in the final event. They had pulled ahead and we're making great grounds here in the relay race, but it looks like Team Canada now, they're fire building more and more as the time goes on. It's still coming, it's just still growing here for Team Canada. Look at them working unison over here, Team Canada back and forth, Kelly and Scott. 
Need a little bit more fuel over here for Team USA. Let's cheer them on, gang, it won't be long now. There we go, now the more flames coming now for Team USA, their fire's taking off now. It's gonna be close. Hey, and Team Canada come from behind victory in the relay race. All right, here with the team captain, Team Canada Relays Team 2 champions in the event, Nathan, scorcher of an underhand cut, but great team effort. Talk to me about that event, man. Yeah, the relay, the biggest thing you have to do for a lot of the relay races like that is guys have to swallow their pride and go in the event that's gonna put the team uh, ahead the best, and that's what we did, and we had uh, we had great guys in every event, and girls, and it just, everybody did their event to the best of their ability, and Lord willing, we ended up with the first place in the between the USA and Canada. Yeah, Kelly Bonus and Scotty Reed at the end there in the kettle boil, that was something special. Talk to you about that. Well, when we got looking at the events, you, the biggest thing you look at is how long each of them is gonna take, which one's gonna take the longest time. Boil's usually about a three minute time, so we thought we wanna take two of our best boilers, stick them in that event. Granted, they could have done other events, but put the best boilers in there and let them go. Absolutely, well, that was awesome. That's what champions are made of. Congratulations, man, it's been a heck of a weekend. Thank you very much. And our crown pivotal point goes to Brad Stevens from Vermont and his stubby sausage fingers. They got him a DQ in the stock saw event, something to do with not being able to reach the entire line in his short fingers. The lumberjacks of the day are Ben and Nathan Cumberland from Keswick Ridge, New Brunswick, and the underhand chop doing a masterful job with 22 inches round with trembling aspen. And hats off to all the sponsors that make this event possible. 25 years and running, we'll see you again next year on Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks is sponsored by Echo, only professional grade with five-year warranty. Crown, protect, maintain, save. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Yamaha, rev your heart. Here with after the double buck cut, we got Ben Nicely and Dave Johns. Gentlemen, great cut, lots of speed, but what happened at the bottom? I stood up out of it. I got a little lazy in the bottom, and I said, oh, we got to be done by now. And I just kind of stood up out of it, and Ben's like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> well, usually you have a turn in the cut. You go to the second cut, but on the 17-inch wood, you know, we got to the bottom, and I was like, well, I think we're done. I think it's already done. I thought we put way too much pressure in the bottom already. So, yeah, it is what it is, right? Ben, what kind of saw are you guys running? I think this is a Mercier two-cutter, right? It's a 5-3 Mercier 2-cutter. Good cut, guys.